I lost oh, my and pipe. I take my dog out to the ranch. I lift my feet and I do a little dance. But when the weather starts to swelter, I head on down to the fallout shelter where Freedom Radio I'll plays all night long. It can hear the words the man doesn't want you to know. Then head to the forums to ramble about with other idiots who like our show. Freedom Radio. <laughs> All right. Freedom Radio down. Now I can... Oh, fuck. I already... Oh, God damn it. I already did Freedom Radio. Okay. It's fine. I can save this. I oh, to take my dog out to the ranch. I lift my feet and do a little dance. But when the government oversteps, I get started on my Tuesday prep. I'm a private citizen. <laughs> I can self suffice on my own device, like the skipper or Gill again. I can saute your rats and broil the bat with a pinch of cinnamon. Doomsday. <laughs> Finally. Now I can... No. No. Fuck. Fuck. I gave Doomsday a purpose to Lemon. All right. When I take my dog out to the ranch, I lift my feet and do a little dance. But when old Rex gets possessed by ghosts, I head online and write some posts. SpiritualResearchFoundation.com It's a real tough name to tie to frame in the rhythm of the song. You can stand defiance with pseudoscience when everything you say is wrong. Hippie bullshit. <laughs> hey there, honey bun. It's garbage day hour 21. In the room this hour, we have John Toast, Lemon, Ump Girl, Bunny Bread, King Lou Fernandez, King Lou Fernandez, <laughs> King Lou Fernandez. And our artist for this hour is Hux. Hi, Toast! Oh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the readings of the Spiritual Research Foundation. How's everybody feeling tonight, Ari? Are you still doing all right? I'm My chakras good. are kicking ass. Really, really Transcendental. Good. Yeah, very Transcendental good. Transcendental shit. All right. That's good. Uh, I felt your chakras very much <laughs> last week. <laughs> last, uh, I, I feel your chakras all over me still. Damn yeah, right. So yeah, I came that. all over the place. Sorry about that. Well, we are going, to, like I said, we're going to be reading about the Spiritual Research Foundation. Uh, spiritual, I'm sorry, the Spiritual Science Research Foundation. Science! Oh, hard, hard science. And uh, let me just start us off by uh, saying what they're all about. So, um, so this is about the Spiritual Science Research Foundation. What we are here for. SSRF's aim is to educate society on the spiritual dimension and how it affects our lives. We conduct research and convey knowledge about the spiritual dimension to help people understand it, advise those who are curious to experience it for themselves, and guide those who have intense desire for spiritual gro growth and God-realization towards achieving their goal. So, that makes sense. See. So, Lemon, could you say, could you tell us whom we are here for? Oh, uh, yeah, I was definitely paying attention to everything that you were doing, and so Science! that's no problem at all. Hi, um, I'm Lemon, is... and I'm just going to take over for this part here. Yeah. Whom yeah. we are here for, I am Lemon, my name is Lemon. Every human being with a curious mind, I'm Lemon, and I'm stupid. Um, jokes point. to people get. Uh, with a curious mind who wants to explore the dimension. From time to time, we get questions from skeptics doubting even the possibility that the spiritual dimension exists. We're not here for them. At SSRF, we are fully aware that the spiritual dimension exists and affects our lives on a daily basis. So rather than spending valuable resources convincing skeptics of its existence, we focus our time and attention on those who have spiritual curiosity and desire for God-realization. I was lemon. <laughs> no, not funny. Okay, well, thank you very much, lemon. Now that we've had lemon, um, 
Uh, Bump Girl, could you read the first paragraph our in, of how our inspiration and how it all began? Sure thing I can. I'd love to. No, uh, um, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, Lemon. I want Bump Girl to read. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, that's no problem. Uh, okay, so... Shit. Oh, yeah. So the Spiritual Science Research Foundation, or the SSRF, was founded with the blessings of His Holiness, Dr. J. and blah, blah, Ithavale, H.H., Dr. Ithavale, I'm not good at reading names, bump girl, was by profession a clinical consultant hypnotherapist from Mumbai, India. He had undertaken extensive research on clinical hypnosis, both in India and overseas, when he was in Britain for seven years. By the way, I'm capitalizing he, just so you know. Uh, for I seven years, it. here's oh a pop-up ad. Um, uh, for seven years, from 1971 to 1978, during his medical practice, he observed that he had an excellent cure rate of 70%. However, 30% of his patients did not recover completely. After a while, he learned that some of those patients with whom he had very little success had recovered after adopting spiritual remedies such as visiting sacred places, remaining in the holy company of spiritually evolved people, or saints, or performing certain religious rituals. Even though Dr. H.H. H. H. Dr. Athavale was an atheist at the time, this phenomenon intrigued him and prompted him to take uh, steps to understand the reasons beyond those cures. He visited okay, saints. Oh, yep. Mm. Yeah, just the first paragraph. That's good. Bump yeah, it, it goes boring. on for quite a while. Yeah, Bump Girl's very boring. You're right. <laughs> oh, Lemon, why would you say that about Bump Girl? That's <laughs> really mean. That's me, man. Girl. That's like misogyny <laughs> as shit. <laughs> I'm thoroughly. I know a little something about misogyny. All right. This is so, fun. So I think we'll uh, I think we'll move on and we'll uh, answer some frequently asked questions. So uh, who would like to answer? Uh, let me see which question. Whether we, so who want to answer why we why do you term spirituality as a science? Ooh, ooh I, I'm Bo Gear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's call everybody by their actual names because this is going to get very confusing. <laughs> Then I don't want to do it. Uh, buddy Brad, take it. Get actual boots. Uh, where, where is this Bu located? What page? I'm sorry. Buddy Brad. Uh, I, I just posted the link and a oh, bunch of people posted that? other links. It's ridiculous. So. It's just stupid. All right. Uh, here we go. What the hell was the 1.2? 1. 2.1. 2. Uh, 2.1. 2.1. That's what I said. Okay. Yeah. okay. Spirituality three, and three, science. Three, Why do you term oh, spirituality as a science? Why would you do that? That's ridiculous. We call the spiritual science, i.e. spirituality, a science because of the following. The study of the spiritual dimension is just as systematic and logical as that as the physical world. Mm. Oh, okay, good. Okay, okay. Um, I'm glad you. I'm glad you brought that point up. I want to stop you because I'm. I'm really interested to see the points and how you back that up and and of you know course, corroborate course. that. Uh, science and science. <laughs> the reason for every. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Did, did, but you mm. didn't go over the points proving that. That I had a period at the end of that. I thought it was. A period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, okay. I, thank you. I'll accept that. I'll accept. Okay. Definitive. definitive. Okay. Moving on. I believe I. Could, Quid pro quo or whatever. The reason <laughs> yes. for everything that happens in the spiritual or subtle dimension <laughs> is spiritual and subtle are the same thing. You didn't know that till now. <laughs> it's a subtle dimension. You wouldn't get it. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I loved it back when it was underground. The reason for everything that happens in the spiritual or subtle dimension is discernible, just as in the physical. Gross. Yep, gross world. Gross world. Scarlett Johansson's acting debut. Right. <laughs> the principles concerning the spiritual dimension can be tested again and again with the requisite tool. Just as the research tools are different for physics and architecture, so also are they for spiritual science. Hmm. Here, the main tool required is developed subtle perception ability or an activated sixth sense. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. totally. Period. Science. You know, science? I, I, I accepted the period nah, at the nah, end of the nah, sentence, but I don't feel. Nah, nah. I just, I just don't feel. So I, I have another question. I want you to skip down to six point six and please answer that. Answer that question, which has no question mark. Please. <laughs> All right. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 
good question. <laughs> this All is the right. mark of a great website. <laughs> I find the information on this website hard to believe. Well, stupid person, we <laughs> understand your feeling. Most of the information published on this website about the spiritual dimension has never been published before. And therefore, it may be difficult to digest in the first reading. It's going over your head because you're a dumb, stupid person. True oh, understanding of something from the spiritual realm can only be attained through spiritual practice. Hmm? Hmm? One way for the skepticism to go away is to experience things firsthand. Wait. <laughs> Wait. I mean, yes, agreed. <laughs> That's how science works. Period. <laughs> Not with you'd, peer-reviewed replication. You'd stop, you'd stop doubting it if you just started believing in it. <laughs> right! Dum dum. You can't be skeptical of shit that's true. Yeah. <laughs> with regular spiritual practice, we are able to perceive this realm, and our skepticism reduces. Holy shit. It sure does. Holy shit indeed. You know, skepticism goes down if you're provided proof. You have that proof. Absolutely. <laughs> and you just were. Nope. <laughs> Skepticism right. reduces when you stop being an asshole. So <laughs> what? What? No, no. I'm sorry. No. All right. So I think I think we've got a good basis for what's going on here. So I think yeah. uh, we need, we can move on to the uh, to the important matters, to the really to the big questions that are taking a long time to load because this website is amazing. Oh well, yep. yeah. Okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Um. Let's see who's not read it is a uh, let's see who all is actually uh, here. You got uh, J W Friedman and Achilles Healy's in this hour. Okay, um, filling in. All right, they uh, snuck in the back door. Mm-hmm. Well, they're here because they believed in it. Yeah. I'm holding. Yeah. I'm, I'm holding a very spiritual grudge against JW because he rapped more than me, I think. So, uh, Achilles. <laughs> oh. Achilles, um, could you answer the most important question of all? It was so important. It was not on the FEQ because it needs its own article. Please go to that and answer what yeah, I, are I ghosts. <laughs> okay. Well, it's uh, it's loading, so I think that we, the spirit hasn't quite arrived yet. We to just my, don't uh, know. <laughs> to my screen. Okay. What are ghosts? When a person dies, only his gross body yeah. <sighs> ceases to exist. His subtle body consisting yeah. of the Subconscious mind, yes, yeah. yeah. soul, i.e., minus the physical body, however, continues Gross. to exist. Gross. <laughs> however, continues to exist and moves on to the other regions of the universe. Refer yeah. to the picture below for a detailed view of what we are comprised of and what we leave behind after death. So, uh should I talk about these pictures? <laughs> uh, no, you don't need to talk about the pictures. I'll be throwing them in the stream uh, in just a moment. Uh, so, <laughs> um, I do want you. Okay, yeah, you, yeah. The diagram don't. <laughs> yeah, because God, wow, this was not in the doc. There is a lot of words on this diagram. Uh, no, uh, skip down and go to the some of these subtle bodies. Just read yeah. that part, please. You know, some of these subtle bodies become ghosts. Ghosts, by definition, meet all of the following criteria. One, they're subtle bodies. Okay, we're done. Move on. No. <laughs> <laughs> Explained. Are you allowed to use the word of the definition? Is that okay? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's a tautology. <laughs> um, they belong to the nether region, Boavlok, or one of the seven regions of hell, Patal. But they are found on the oh. earth region, Bulak, too. <laughs> this well, that is because ghosts the are from the more... The <laughs> Sorry, what? So, was, that'll change when the bullshit nation attacked. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. This is because ghosts from the more subtle regions of the universe can travel to the more gross ones like Earth at will. You know, Ew. I'm not disagreeing with some of this stuff, honestly. So, <laughs> Mortal Kombat got really complicated. <laughs> True. Agreed. agreed. Uh, they do not exist in the positive planes of the universe, i.e. heaven, swarga, and above. They have unfulfilled desires such as cravings for sex, alcohol, Things that they can only experience through a gross body. I'm sorry, did somebody say my name? <laughs> gross. <laughs> also, or... Boovar Lock seems to be a GURPS uh, campaign definition. <laughs> Good. Like... <laughs> uh, revenge, etc. 
They derive pleasure out of exerting control over and tormenting humans and other subtle bodies. Their general aim is aligned with bringing about unrighteousness in society. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Sure. Why not? Yeah. 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 Hey, fellas. <laughs> yeah. <What>? Yeah. <laughs> all the single fellas. <laughs> not all of them, though. Oh, okay. That's pretty much everyone. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so we so we know what ghosts are. Thank you very much, Achilles. Um, yeah, no problem. So, JW, I've forgiven you for now. Okay, th- thanks, thanks, bud. Okay, can you give me some facts about ghosts and specifically? Um, actually, let me look through because there was a lot of good stuff here. Uh, uh, one fact about ghosts is they take a long time to load. <laughs> <laughs> facts about ghosts. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let's just just start at the top. We'll keep going. Uh, this is totally just a GURPS manual. <laughs> yeah, but like with more Aren't pastel colors, the spiritual like there's level a bunch higher of, than thirty percent. There's a bunch of baby blue and pink, which makes me trust it. And like people, uh, like in <laughs> yoga positions, so that's good. Yeah. Are you- does everyone see the same images? Is there the animated GIF of spiritual tour that looks like oh, a face yeah, morph? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, what the hell am I missing out? Oh, oh shit, I could be masturbating right now. <laughs> it looks like Michael Jackson's black or white video. It's really great. <laughs> oh, Are you Australia videos. or Asia? <laughs> okay. Mm. Some facts about ghosts. Do ghosts have a gender, i.e. are they male or female? Ghosts, demons, devils, negative energies, etc. do not have a physical body. Hence, in this perspective, there is no gender. But on the basis of the appearance of their subtle form and psychological characteristics, they are differentiated into male and female forms. For example, the female goblin, Jaqin, and witch are females, whereas subtle sorcerers, mantric, are generally male. When ghosts materialize, the apparent form is most influenced by the appearance and sex of their immediate prior birth. That is, if the ghost was a female in the human form, it would materialize as a female. Higher order ghosts, like subtle sorcerers, have the ability to assume a form as per their liking. Subtle sorcerers are ghosts with very high spiritual power comparable to the spiritual powers of (laughs) saints. In order to acquire such levels of spiritual powers, a subtle sorcerer needs to perform intense spiritual practice with single-minded focus and rational thinking. As the qualities of single-mindedness and rational thinking, Yay! Yay! as the qualities of single-mindedness and rational thinking are <clears throat> more male-related characteristics, of course, subtle yes, sorcerers yes, yes, generally take up a male form. <laughs> uh, pushes up glasses. <laughs> I pushed up my glasses too. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little you know just just reading out the campaign there and then a little a little dose of sexism at the end just a little <laughs> i'm the best <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see uh let's see six uh uh no if y'all see anything on this one that looks interesting you can jump in on it, but I, it all... You said interesting, well. right? Hey, uh, <laughs> I, I looked up uh, Subtle Sorcerers real quick. Uh, Achilles, actually, before you do that, I have a question for oh. you. Uh, do ghosts possess intelligence? Ooh, that's good. <laughs> I'm just going to paste it right there in the Discord for you. Do ghosts uh, possess intelligence? Is this just open for any ghost in the building? All right, hang on. I will speak on behalf of on behalf no, of ghosts. No, that was Achilles. No. Achilles. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, Achilles, sure. you're dead, right? Yeah, that, that's true. That's how I got here. Um, yep. The intellect of normal human beings is directed towards accomplishing various tasks in the world to satisfy them at a physical, psychological, and spiritual levels. The human intellect has an inherent discriminatory element that guides the person about what is right and what is wrong, and also what is to be pursued and what is to be abandoned. <laughs> Uh-huh. When we pa- mm. uh-huh. when we pass on, if we become ghosts, we tend to lose this discriminatory intelligence. The reason yeah. for this is that as subtle bodies, the main body is the mental body, which is full of desires. Mm. Wrong. The mind wants what it wants. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the intellect is then used single-mindedly to fulfill these desires. This is unlike on Earth where the intellect is used for a variety of things. Physical activity included... What? Physical activity included such as earning a living, etc. 
Okay. Hey, what you gonna do today? Uh, earn a living, I guess. Oh God, <laughs> again. A little bit of earning a living. <laughs> I'm going to do it entirely with physical activity. Damn right. <laughs> as, a ghost my obs- poor polish, dude. <laughs> as a ghost becomes obsessed with f- fulfilling their desires or troubling others, their intellect is directly... Com- is directly Wait, how completely- is that the same thing? Huh? That is not the same thing. Shh, come on now. He's a ghost. Mm-mm. You sound like a skeptic to me. <laughs> <laughs> Get him! The intellect is totally ego-based and restricted to acquiring power. The ghosts of the nether region, due to their lesser desires, have some semblance of human intelligence. The ghosts of middle-rung subtle sorcerers from various regions of hell, this is hard to read for some reason, i.e. from the first region of hell to the fourth, are are progressively more and more like robots in the hands of their superior subtle sorcerers. Okay. When you think hell, you think robots. I but do. Like, but like sex robots, right? Well, like yeah. Steve Bannon sex robots? Yeah. yeah. Steve okay. Bannon and hell go, yeah, that works. <laughs> superior no, subtle I'm... sorcerers. <laughs> so, sorry, what? I'm seeing lesser desires now. The ghosts yeah. in the nether region have lesser desires. So these, these, the robots aren't sex robots. Oh, that's too bad. They're just ghost robots. Well, they, they could be love robots, right? I think they're minions of the subtle, superior subtle sorcerers. Oh, yeah. Superior yeah. subtle sorcerers. Ooh, yeah. did someone say minions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at your t-shirt. Yeah, I was going to say, who wants to see my new tattoo? <laughs> uh, real quick, I'm going to uh, drag uh, Frank West out of the video game hole and just uh, check in here on Frank. Hey, Frank, you uh, this looks uh, this doesn't look fun. You seem to be. It's, are you moving anywhere? Are you just going around in a circle? It's so fucking bad. I am climbing up a mountain. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm taking continuous damage from the cold. Yeah. And I have to duck into the campfires that are scattered throughout, um, which heal me. They don't make me not cold. They just heal me. Oh, you're playing yeah. Skyrim with a mod. That makes sense. Yeah, what except I don't I don't have a map. I don't know where I'm going, and I made it... You're going to I, see Parthenax. Well, I made it about 10 minutes through this level, and then I ran forward down the 100% linear path and came to a place where the path ended, and I couldn't go anywhere, <laughs> and I didn't have enough health to get back. So you're I just good. died. You got a little uh, red snowflake, which probably means you're cold. The red snowflake. Yes. Oh, it looks like you can go camping. Are here. you on your period? What is it? And then, oh, and then, oh, this is how you get health back. Yeah, this is how you get health. You, you don't stop being cold. You just okay. You just jump in fire, and that heals you as it yeah. does in the life. You just yeah. stick a straw in the fire. And just <laughs> <laughs> have you have you run into anything on this? Uh, like, is there any other stuff, or is it just not on this level? This level okay. is, I guess, just a level about walking cold. on a path forever. Yeah. And, and, and remind me, me remind me the name of this game. Uh. Amok, A M O K, all caps. Okay. And and how much was this game? Seven bucks. Okay. <laughs> and worth every penny. Wait, are so far? I mean, I, I know you're in it. I know you're in it. But like, uh, so far, would you say better, or worse than the than the previous game? Oh, it's so much worse. <laughs> I mean, I think you you're... you got to beat the other one. I suppose there's that. <laughs> Oh, one thing I didn't mention is that I take fall damage if I fall for more than a foot, and fall damage does like half my health, so I will be <laughs> effectively immediately dead, and just I have to cold to death. Cool, cool. seems good. Cool, cool. And sometimes uh, I walk into a inch deep crevice, and my foot gets stuck, and I have to mash all of my buttons to escape. I think you uh, might be a subtle body. Um, you're definitely playing Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're learning about ghosts, and you seem to be one. Mm. We learned we learned that they only have one burning desire, so maybe you should go stand next to that fire again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put you back in the video game hole. Oh no! I know. Sorry, uh, Gem Toast. What's up next? Well, I think we want to see now that we know a little bit more about these ghosts, where these ghosts exist, and specifically Ooh. in two types of places. So, let's see. A uh, bump girl, actual bump girl. <laughs> Subtle bump girl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you go to that link and you, if you could tell me, so let, let, let's see. So the start of this is just where this is about where ghost exists. Yep. They mainly exist in the nether region, but they also inhabit the earth region and affect certain such things. So if you could scroll down and tell me where ghosts exist in relation to animals. Well, in, or, in order like to. Turtles. <laughs> For Thank you, turtles. ghost. In order for the audience to follow along, I, Lemon might want to paste this picture into the stream. Oh, the um, one I already pasted? <laughs> oh, look at that. He's just so on top oh, of it. Yep. Um, 
Do you want me to animal? Where's animal? It's right under human beings. It's There's a uh, dog. The, right where there. to go six us on Earth? Okay. Um, animals. Ghosts are mostly found on animals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They rarely exist inside animals. However, they do so when they want to trouble mankind through controlling them. The possessed animal would become wild and attack humans, thus causing distress to them. <laughs> yeah, we should do. That's fair. That's the most logical thing we've seen so far. Some animals and birds, such as dogs, horses, owls, and crows, are more sensitive to the presence of ghosts. When dogs are found barking or howling suddenly in the night without any apparent reason, it could be because they sense the presence of ghosts. <laughs> All right, yeah. Or need to take a piss. Go- generally, ghosts perch themselves on vegetation. Here again, those trees whose frequencies are similar to those of ghosts are favored. Uh, um, uh, side note, everything in the universe has a certain frequency, and aura is a manifestation of this frequency. This is the really? best place to put this information under a subset of where do ghosts exist on vegetation. I mean, you know, they, they, it's, it's common knowledge. They didn't think they had to even say it, but, you know. But, yeah. Um, the cam- for the layman. The tamarind tree, just randomly choosing one that happens to be shown in this picture, is a commonly known and documented example, documented mostly here on this website. Ghosts also frequent trees like the Indian fig tree, ficus indica, look at us being scientific, and the holy fig tree, which doesn't have a scientific name because it's holy. Ficus Jesus. All right, so... Ghosts, ghosts like plants and animals. I think we know. I think we. I think that's all we need to know here. So well, we might want to bounce across to the referred to article. Can animals and plants slash trees also be possessed? Oh, Joe, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we gotta wait for it to load first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, good. Oh, good. oh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to be all, I don't know how long this is. I didn't see that article. I didn't have the time. Good deals. Okay, so let us see. Uh, get my Discord working. So, uh, but, but, uh, come on. Work with me here. Okay. So, uh, so let's see. I will uh, just do the intro to this. So, this is an article about loading. Here we go. So this is a symptom of symptoms of ghosts affecting a, or possessing a person. So spiritual research has shown that almost the entire world is affected by ghosts at some time or the other in their life. About 30% of the world's population is possessed by ghosts. So, <laughs> <laughs> a little intro well, there to give you a basis. About. So we gave himself some good wiggle room. <laughs> That technically means that somebody in this chat right now is possessed by a ghost, right? <laughs> Two people, probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One of them yeah. is me. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I owe so someone a dollar. I, I, Jay, I've always thought you possessed a subtle body, after all. <laughs> I mean, that's one word for it. I, it's it's kind of gross, though. <laughs> Okay, but um, you know, and so it goes over like here's the why why the uh, the sense organs like why it might feel like you're being possessed. Um, mm-hmm. Like in the five sense organs, it it does like foul taste in the mouth, experience of eyes being pulled inside, dryness of lips, and also of course due to the rajatama in the ghosts, the sticky layers formed on the face and body of the affected person. Of course, yeah, we all know this. <laughs> yeah, we know that. Uh, but I want to move on to four point one on this page. Who would like to take that? Four point one. God, that's my favorite number. <laughs> Four eight three eight two eight one. It hey, won't be for long. <laughs> Four point one. That turned into my really favorite number. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Oh, this oh. is this is quite a treat. Us. Okay. Oh, Fantastic. Yeah. Lemon, hey. Lemon, you take it. What? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 4.1, homosexual attraction. The main reason behind the gay orientation of some men is that they are possessed by female Funny ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. possessed. I, I want to emphasize they are possessed by female ghosts. <laughs> they are possessed by female ghosts. It is the female ghost in them that is attracted to other men. Conversely, the attraction to females oh experienced God. by some lesbians. This is science, God damn it! I'm telling science to you. <laughs> is due to the presence of male ghosts in them. The ghost consciousness overpowers the person's normal behavior to produce the homosexual attraction. 
Mm. So we're really doing this. <laughs> Hell yeah, we are. <laughs> Spiritual research has shown that the cause for homosexual preference lie predominantly in the spiritual realm. Okay, so physical causes, and this is only 5% of something. Uh, oh, just the total. Just the total of all gays, I think. I think this is the 5% of gays uh, is due to hormonal changes. Science, great. So, uh, wait. Yeah. So they, uh, never mind. <laughs> only 5% of gays are gay because of hormonal changes. Okay, now that said, Smart 10%. Ten percent uh, is psychological changes. Having an experience with a person of the same sex as a teenager or young adult was that was pleasurable, and therefore wanted to experience it again. That's ten percent. However, eighty-five <laughs> percent is mainly ghosts. Oh, right. I, I, I hate to cut you off, there, Lemon. I hate to cut everybody off. I just the third bullet point is just spiritual causes. Eighty-five percent mainly ghosts. Mainly ghosts. <laughs> It's really good. <laughs> and they uh, they have a bunch of uh, chanting. Uh, yeah, you, know, you can spiritual do like Pranahama. You can do know, like make you not gay, I guess. <laughs> Some sort of like uh, like Indian bisexuality creep, is incurable. Uh, Michelle Bachman shit. Oh, if you're bisexual, you're possessed by two ghosts. That's yeah, no, it doesn't make sense. What does bi mean exactly? Yeah, that's right. I like psychological <laughs> causes. Having an experience with a person as a teenager or young adult that was pleasurable and wanting to experience it again. That's like 100% of all sexual behavior, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was psychological. And it's entirely psychological. That's, uh, yeah. that's actually just the F plus theory. Yeah. <laughs> First ghost boner. I've found that people who have gay sex and like it are gay. Oh my god, you have to chant 108 times in every morning, afternoon, and evening? I'm that's gay, ridiculous. Is that to stay I'm gay or to go gay. ungay? No, that's to make you ungay. Duration un you daily un till the homosexual tendency goes away. Yeah. Oh. Uh, should be going continuously for like about 45 weekly? minutes, but it can be done longer. All right. <laughs> So I was I was possibly looking at there's something about gay parades, but I scanned through it real quick again, and it was just kind of like you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of homophobic bullshit. So okay. whatever, forget it. So we are actually going to talk about the spiritual effect of women leaving their hair loose, which I think is yeah. what's really <laughs> bunny bread. I'm sorry about the confusion earlier. Please take this. <laughs> but, <clears throat> With hair wide open. <laughs> <sighs> Introduction to the spiritual effects of women leaving her hair down. Shampoo commercials, along with fashion and celebrity magazines around the world, have long promoted the glamorous look of women swishing their hair in front of the camera. <laughs> These guys. Gross! Are Agreed. Yes. Hair! <laughs> These kind of marketing messages have shaped the general perception of women that if one wants to look glamorous, one should leave one's hair open. Wasn't one doing oneself? Yes, you what? Nowadays, it is common for women worldwide to leave their hair open, and this is especially so when they step out for the evening wanting to look their best. Spiritual research conducted by SSRF on hairstyles has shed light on the spiritual effect of various hairstyles. In this article, we discuss the spiritual effect of women and men leaving their hair open. Oh, men too! Men have hair! Woo! <laughs> To better un understand this article, I recommend you get brain damage. Now. Okay, got it. I'm on it. <laughs> Two, the spiritual effect of hair left down. In this section, we share a drawing based on subtle knowledge drawn by Miss Priyanka Lotlikar, who has an advanced sixth sense of vision. The vision okay, is a sixth sense. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, just skip down to two point one and, 2 .1. and read, from, read from there. Uh, to read two point one, two point two, and two point three, please. The effect on women with short hair. Listen up. Okay. Women with short hair are at a disadvantage. I have very short hair. Women with short <laughs> hair are at a disadvantage as they generally keep their hair open. As a result, distressing energies from the environment are continuously attracted to the hair left open. Hmm? Yes? We, okay, I, just, so, to pause, just to pause for one second. Uh, what does open mean? I, I genuinely can't figure out what open means. Here. Uncovered. Uncovered. Okay, well, well let me, let me read what? this like from hats the... Like hats or... Let me, I'll, I'll read... Job. 
I'll read a section from the preceding paragraph. It was too long. It's boring, but I will okay, say okay. it's negative energy is attacked through exposed hair tips is what happens. And here's the sentence that uh, will hopefully clear this up. When hair tips are left exposed as the above drawing based on subtle knowledge, negative energies use the void in the hair tips to enter oh, a woman and travel up the pores of the scalp. Oh, See, they come through the hair. Oh, no, no, yes. no, the hair tips. So, so that means if they like cap off the hair at the end, they're fine. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I put the little like uh, shoelace that, things. Yeah, on, yeah, the on aglets. Every right. Yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> everybody okay. get dreadlocks. We're cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dreadlocks are coming up soon. Wait for it. Oh, good. Oh, 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 oh. Short hair on a woman is more likely to become charged with distressing vibrations. A solution to minimize the negative effect has been given in the last section of this article. Thank you, Toast. Now, two point two, sleeping with hair open. What a woman. Sleeps- in your pillow tight. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah! Exorcist oh, no. into bullshit. <laughs> Give me a few. All right. <laughs> when a woman sleeps with her hair open, the tips of the hair shaft are exposed. When sleeping, we are more vo- we are more vulnerable to negative energy as they are more active at night due to the increased rajatama vibrations in the environment. This is especially so for women who do not regular spiritual practice. Hey, you know who else has uh, really beautiful long hair? Me. (laughs) (laughs) There are many people in your life. (laughs) 5,800. God damn. Oh, thank you. 2.3. Ted might be a ghost. Sorry. Sorry. No, no. That's the kind of ghost I love the most. There it is. Why do men not get affected by keeping their hair short and open? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Good point. That's right. I do ask things. At a spiritual level, men generally have less of the raja, subtle component, than women. Hence, they are less emotional and are also less sensitive. Hmm? (laughs) Make sense? Yeah. Bump, no, are you just crying like a woman? Because we're all logical and shit, like you pointed out earlier. Yes. We're, we're super logical, and our hair is, like, really straight. We are very Especially smart. the ones who write this website. Yes, because of our penises. They also so logical. have a higher ability to fight with negativity. They kick its ass. As a result, they are less prone to a subtle attack because of their hair being cut. Mm, yes, logic. Men have a higher ability to imbibe the sattva component with short and open hair. It is therefore recommended for men to keep their hair short. Hair greases the subtle hippie effect in their body and disturbs their inner stability. Right? It disturbs right. their... It disturbs... So it makes them crazy? Yes. Okay, it gives okay. Them the, it gives them the hysteria and the, the periods. <laughs> right. Thanks. All right. Yeah, I follow that. Yeah, that's that's really. Super oh, helpful. Sattva, Rajva, and Tama are just spring string theory and in, like Indian spirituality. They are unknown to modern sciences, and they permeate through all living and non-living, tangible and intangible things, and they emit vibrations. Isn't that what I just said? <laughs> sure. Uh, these Maybe. these this uh, this Hux drawing is really making me feel uh, transcendental. Like I think it's I think it's expanding my uh, I think it's expanding my everything, especially the ghost uh, entering the woman's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Let me in. Now, now I will, as the capper of that, I will say that um, there's a there is a section about the bun hairstyle, and they oh, say oh, through oh, spiritual oh. through spiritual research, we found that the bun is also the most spiritually beneficial way of styling a woman's hair. God damn and right. the rest uh-huh. is just a bunch of, you know, believe it or not, it's just more bullshit. But it's more bullshit. about beautiful bobs. <laughs> Show me your bobs. Now, who, me who, your brought, bobs. Now, who brought up dreadlocks earlier? J Dobbs! Uh, J.W. Friedman brought up brought up dreadlocks. Uh, is, he, is, he, is he still uh, with the yeah. now? Yeah. Oh, God. His hair cool. Would, sorry, I was busy teasing my dreads. <laughs> my, uh, my my dreadies as we call them looking nice real yeah. nice well if you could if you could go 311 as your as your spiritual advisor uh jw don't do that <laughs> but 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 amber it's the color it's not the color of your energy i keep telling you this oh. <sighs> okay we'll move on we'll move on please uh 
load the link now. So by the time I'm done talking, hopefully it'll be loaded. <laughs> uh, it's not likely. We might be here for another 10 minutes. But once it is done, please read the introduction to that article and name the article as well, please. Oh, God. The article is called Dreadlocks, A Spiritual Perspective. <laughs> and the text is actually called why not to get dreadlocks <laughs> oh the what's great is that the text is why not to get dreadlocks and the uh, the url is how not to get dreadlocks <laughs> how not <laughs> to get dreadlocks these so are both just... good tricky now washed <laughs> they've really covered their bases on this one <laughs> <laughs> introduction People from every walk of life, be it the music world or sports field, have opted to wear dreadlocks, matted Whoa. coils of hair. As a result, this way of wearing hair is becoming increasingly socially acceptable. Even cool. those with very straight hair have developed methods to dreadlock their hair. How dreadlocks are made. Most dreadlocks are usually intentionally formed. Because of the variety of different hair textures, various methods are used to encourage the formation of locks, such as backcombing, teasing, Additionally, leaving long hair to grow naturally and not brushing or cutting the hair will encourage it to tangle together as it grows, leading to twisted, matted ropes of hair known as dreadlocks. The latter method is typically referred to as the neglect, natural, organic, or freeform method. Okay, let's skip down to number. Let's skip down to four, please. Uh, well, here's the problem: influenced by negative energy. No. Oh. In reality, negative forces influence people to choose the dreadlocks hairstyle by giving them thoughts, as we saw above, which will encourage people to wear dreadlocks. The reasons for the formation of dreadlocks were associated with spiritual distress. It basically results in the creation of a negative energy center outside the body of a human being through the dreadlocks. The person who gets the dreadlocks done has 5% more chance of being attacked by negative energies. Ooh, that that is is why that the ghosts? So many statistics. I love these numbers. They're so helpful. That is why it is advisable not to get dreadlocks. Well, yeah. One of our seekers was attacked by negative energies when her hair got spontaneously matted. <laughs> oh, spontaneously! <laughs> There's a great picture of it. Boy, <laughs> it was beautiful a second ago. Uh, explanation of the above phenomenon and the development of spontaneously matted hair in a seeker. Mantrix had begun the process of forming dreadlocks on this lady seeker by attacking her hair for seven to eight months. That's not very spontaneous. <laughs> Due to the dreadlocks, she experienced negative thinking. No ability okay, to okay. perform. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. This is actually, awful. Like, yeah, yeah. So sorry, <laughs> sorry. That was uh, I was I was checking through the docs. Let's go down to five and um. We have posted that picture, though, of the lady's bad hair, right? Oh, good. <laughs> oh, happy. You know. I mean, come on. Uh, you know what? We are... Can we just... Uh, we're we're before, running low We definitely are. Can we just take a quick sec? I just want to... Oh, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Toxic sure. waste over here. Uh, Frank West, you're in... Is that toxic waste? What's what's? It what's was toxic on? waste, and now I'm dead. But I okay. do. I am fighting uh, crash test Boxes. Dummies. Oh. Crash uh, test dummies? Like the band? Uh no, mm -hmm. like the ones who don't want me to who want me to buckle my seatbelt. Oh, like the oh band. my god, look at it! <laughs> I'm pretty oh. sure the band wants you to buckle your seatbelt. That seat guy, that guy hates you. I mean, he's yeah. slow, but he's angry at you. He doesn't care for you at all. <laughs> I guess he's mad because of how low the ceiling is. Yeah, no, he's pretty tall. Like, can you get us a better view of his tits? <laughs> oh god, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She's slobbing that knob in there. All right. <laughs> you did miss the weird, very fat cave trolls with the fantastic asses. No, no, no. Go back, go back. I awesome. want some more crash test dongy. <laughs> Once know, there was a guy who squatted spontaneously, hit me in the face. <laughs> but when he finally quit the game, we all thanked him for his time in this. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, buddy. He couldn't quite explain why he spent seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta switch back, Frank. See you soon. I will miss you. <laughs> no, you. I will miss you and the. <laughs> Ooh, we're so close to six six thousand dollars. Ooh, six thousand nice. dollars. I think it's because of all the positive spiritual energies from these, from these readings. Yeah, I'm feeling it. 
My dreads became like unraveled. It was amazing. So <laughs> there, there is still a bunch of great stuff here. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to bounce around. Let me see if we can get to stuff. So there is uh, a section on body piercing. And oh. let's see. Uh, who would like to read? Bump should read about body piercing. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a fantastic idea. and Nothing could possibly go wrong with this. <laughs> okay, so, so well, first... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I was just going to say it's great when men get their body pierced because they're more intellectually equipped to handle the yep. of body <laughs> I got my dreads pierced the other day. We can deal with the emotional pain as well as the physical pain. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm just going to jump down to like point three or cool. three point. Body piercing places okay. which are spiritually harmful. Places on the body that are harmful to have piercings include the eyebrow, mouth, tongue, and other parts of the face or body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just let that sit in, sink in. Um, the following drawing based on subtle knowledge will illustrate the effects of having oh. a piercing at such a place. Yo, that is serial killer wall shit. <laughs> it looks like a grandma. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I was what looking at the map. I didn't see that. What is happening? <laughs> The eyes, the <laughs> eyes. Um, anyway, um, it's whoever's using, in power to throw that up in the stream shit. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. It's using advanced sixth sense, um, because uh, uh, Yoya, the, the drawer of the drawing, has the ability to see into the subtle and creates drawings based on subtle knowledge as a part of her spiritual practice and service unto the absolute truth. Uh, sweet baby Jesus, now we're in cult land. Uh, the drawings based on subtle knowledge are then verified by his holiness, Dr. Athaval. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa, that's a clickable link. Oh, it's just back to the yes. About Us one. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot about Dr. Athaval. I don't think we have time anymore, sadly. But uh, nope. let's, go, let's go down to um, from the drawings based on subtle knowledge. Let's read that part. Yeah, Can yeah, yeah. Say, it looks like Peggy Hill. <laughs> I just needed to say that. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> So, um, having a piercing at the eyebrow increases a person's ego as it increases our awareness of the body. Rings of ego are also activated and emitted from the person. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Waves wow, of wow, attraction wow. and illusionary, illusionary energy are emitted from the person that can cause others to feel positive while looking at them. Distressing energy is attracted towards the area that is pierced and also creates a subtle covering around the person with the piercing. The same effect not specifying which one of those three effects occurs if we have All a piercing effects. at the tongue, <laughs> mouth, or other body piercing place. Wink, wink, so wink. to get specific, yeah. any piercing that happens on your body causes both bad things and good things to happen. No, no, no. We're That's talking actually about true, your, I think. your other body piercing you know. place. You know. <laughs> In right summary, on your penis, Bob. <laughs> body piercings from a spiritual standpoint after conducting this study wait what the fuck there was no study um some key points we can picture. take with us include by having a piercing at an appropriate place such as the left side of the nose or the ear and even though we skipped a lot that was not covered in this page one can obtain many spiritual benefits for health and gain protection from negative energies which includes ghosts devils and demons i know a lot of people were worrying about the specifics of that good <laughs> piercing the skin at places such as the eyebrow mouth or tongue does not have any spiritual benefit and will cause distress for the person wearing the piercing so only the left side of the nose or ear are okay Cool. Uh, great. Uh, did we? We've learned something. <laughs> I'm not sure that we have, honestly. Uh, but boy, Frank All West right. is sure restarting this game a lot. I learned <laughs> that I've got a, that my body's gross anyway, so I might as well just start focusing on my subtle body. Yeah. <laughs> like a like All a right. Troishka doll sort of situation. <laughs> yeah, the the body inside me. <laughs> I ghost. learned I, I I gotta shave my dreads, which sucks because they're totally gonna kick me out of the jam band. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I learned first, that having like short hair dreads is probably the worst thing I can do, apart from getting a piercing somewhere that isn't my left ear. Yeah, yeah. I think the worst thing you can do is be a woman. Uh, well, that's so, I mean, yeah. So I mean, really, three three strikes are out there, bump. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, to, Fair enough. I'll leave. Okay. Bye. Bye.
as as a spiritual leader to this meeting, I want to cap things off with what I learned, and it is yeah. the last reading we will do, and I will cap this off. And it is a part of the answer of do the light side and dark side actually exist? Okay. So there are four points. One, there are people who belong to the positive forces, light side, and there are those who belong to the negative forces, dark side. Two. That will be the women uh, shout out. Uh, Star Wars, and yeah. oh, you actually referenced Star Wars in the. Okay, great. Yep. <laughs> Yes, I'm very up with uh, up with the culture. Mm. Two, there are entities in the subtle dimension who belong to the positive or negative forces. Three, there are levels in hierarchy with advanced masters on each side. And four, the master of each side, both on Earth and the subtle world, have various supernatural abilities such as collecting and sending various types of positive or negative energy, as well as various other abilities explained further below. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I'm glad I could clear that up. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Oh, we're at 6,000! We're at 6,000, everybody! Yeah! Oh, boy, that means the Hanson graphic gets even stupider. Uh, Whoa! Yeah, now there's a skeleton fucking another skeleton down the street. Uh, I don't know if uh, we've, we've pointed this out, uh, but in addition to all of the many things that you can do to Albert, our mascot, uh, the... Um, the every thousand dollars that we raise, uh, the Hanson video gets progressively more stupid. Um, yeah, uh, we will be coming back with our 12 uh, intentional, communi- uh, intentional communities, a document by Sphagnum. Uh, I'll be your host. We've got Hilly, he- we've got Achilles Healy's, we've got Bump Girl, we've got Bunny Bread, we've got Zarla, we might have Lou. Uh, and we're gonna bring Hux back. Uh, yeah, so stick around. See you very soon. <laughs>